Hey there, folks. My name is David Gewurz for ZDNate's DIY IT Discovery Series in Desktop Fabrication. In this video, we're going to build an X-Carve CNC. Now, I built this over the course of a little over a week and a half, and every day when I had a little time, I came out to the workshop to do a little bit more building. And every day I filmed about a minute of a video log about that day's build experience, which I then posted on the social media sites. So what you're going to see is you're going to see 13 one minute snippets of my build process with the X-Carve. So I've started to build the X-Carve CNC. This is the week between Christmas and New Year's. There's four inches of snow outside. What better time to take on a project that's bigger than anything I've tried to do before? I have built kits and projects and electronics things for years, but this, this is the biggest. I got to tell you, I'm a little intimidated by it. The directions are okay, but not 100%. Um, there's some videos online, but they don't quite match up with the current version. But hey, I'm going to try it, and I'm sure by the end I will have a working CNC and maybe some profanity. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned, though, because I'm going to show you each day as we go along. And, and of course, over time, there'll be a lot of editorial on projects built with this. But this is the biggest project I've ever put together. So... Here we go. Okay, so this is day two of the CNC build, the X-Carve build. Uh, yesterday, I put together most of these waste boards. This is the part that the machine carves back and forth. Um, it was tedious, but not too bad. The only thing was is that I was reasonably convinced I was missing parts, and that's when I stopped. And then I found this extra bag, which isn't labeled right, but I'm kind of hoping is the right set of parts. I organize things nicely in my little parts tray with little parts bins and things like that and um, put it together. And this is where I am so far. So the next process is going to be putting in 200 of these things. So I'm going to be spending most of today putting in 200 of these. So I wanted to show you the overall workshop setup for building the X-Carve. I have stuff on wheels. Almost everything in the workshop is on wheels. And so that allows me to rearrange the workshop for each individual project. So in this case, I rearranged the workshop. I built two of these rolling carts from Rockler, moved my workbenches around, raised up the TV. And, and by the way, the TV is on this, this up desk, which turns out to be very, very helpful in the garage. I'll show you, I'll show you that in a future video, but it goes up and down and I can stuff stuff underneath it. And um, my folding miter saw station is over here and all of these parts, everything around me, like there are so many parts for this thing. It is crazy, but I'm able to put this together. And on the other side of the workshop, I've moved all my stuff, my other stuff, so that I have space to do this. Okay, another day, another X-Carve progress report. So today I spent a good chunk of the time screwing in those 200 little brackets that go on the bottom of the waste board that allow me to attach cramp, <laughs> cramps, clamps, but my wrist got cramped. Uh, even so, it was kind of fun. It came with its own little bit and you just put them in. Today I put, on, put in these sides and that's making this thing start to look like a CNC. There were four uh, plastic sides on each side, and we had to peel off the, pla the covering for that, which my wife helped with, thank you very much, and then put on these uh, pieces of extrusion, which X-Carve likes to call maker slides. And that took between this, putting in all of the, um, the screw pieces and putting this together, that was the okay, day. another day, another X-Carve build report. And since I know some of you are going to ask this question, the reason that I do a relatively small amount each day is because I have my full-time job during the rest of the time. So I have deadlines and I have articles and I have all that stuff to do. And I sneak away and I get, you know, somewhere between 15 minutes and an hour, maybe two hours if I can, to work on this. So today I put in the sliding sides, which is really cool because the first time I've gotten to touch the motors and that's kind of neat. 
what I found, there were two things that were very interesting about this. The first is that there is a little tiny bracket that has an off-center circle that allows you to, up, to, to scale up and adjust the wheels, which was really neat. And the other thing is, is that blue tape, again, came in handy. I used blue tape as a second hand or a third hand multiple times. So that's it. Tomorrow we do the cross well, gantry. Another day, another X-Carve build report. Today was both frustrating and exciting. Let me get the frustrating out of the way first. Two things. First, I put the wheels in this cart in, the, the part that runs the cable, I installed them backwards. Oops. So make sure you follow the directions so that you get them installed right. The second thing is, is that there are missing parts. I raided uh, my old 3D printing gear for some spare T-nuts, but Inventables did not include enough parts, and that was frustrating. I'm really hoping that my spares will do the job. The exciting, though, is this. Check it out. The gantry goes forward and back left and right. The only thing I need to do is I now need to put in the spindle that goes up and down, but now we're starting to look like a CNC and like a 3D printer for that matter. We have an XY Cartesian system. Yay! Another day, another X-Carve build report. Today I got to install the spinning wheel. This is the gantry. This is actually the x-axis for the unit. So this is how the uh, router goes up and down. So I installed this part, which controls the up and down of the router, and I also installed the router itself. This is the collet down here, the spindle mounts down here, and come down and do its drilling. So this marks, I believe, pretty close to the end of the major mechanical build I think I get to start wiring tomorrow, and I am excited. See you then. Another day, another X-Carve build report, and another day and some missing screws. I did contact Inventables, and they are FedExing me some spare parts, so that's good, although right now they're stuck somewhere in the FedEx system. Oh no! But meanwhile, more missing parts. In any case, my big accomplishment was getting the, the uh, drag chains and the wiring done for this. And the wiring is mostly done in the sense that the wiring to all of the mechanical pieces is complete, but I haven't yet hooked up the control box and I haven't hooked the wiring to the control box. But the drag chains are in place. They work going back and forth, the, uh, both on the, the X and uh, Y axis. And the sideboard, which is an optional component if you get the, the larger kit, has been installed as well, and that's going to hold the controller. So tomorrow we get to belt this thing, which is putting in all the belts that move the axis. Well, today was See a that? surprising amount of work. I put in the belts. There's three belts that need to be put into this thing. And um, getting them to run under the various cogs that they need to run around and then getting them to stretch just right and tension just right turned out to be a lot more work than I expected. They were not as hard as I expected, although when I started I had to take the main one single belt and cut it into three parts and for some reason that really kind of freaked me out but i just laid one end of the belt from side from one end of the the device to the other and uh, measured and cut and it was fine tomorrow i get to build the x controller i get to build all of the electronics that drive this thing so essentially all of the mechanical and, and electromechanical stuff is done, and tomorrow it's just the controller. Another so, day, yeah. another X-Carve build report. Today I got to build the X-Controller, which was just about as easy as building any electronics device. So if you've ever done any PC building or anything like that, you're fine. I do wish Inventables had done a few things differently. I wish they'd recommended routing the wiring up through the spoil board where there's a hole for it, as opposed to just leaving them out because cable management is kind of ugly on this thing. I wish that they had made all the cables coming from all the parts end at exactly the right distance so that there weren't longer and shorter cables right at the back of the X controller. And weirdly enough, the, um, the router has a cord that kind of comes to an end, the power, it comes to an end right where the X controller is, but there's no plug for it, and yet there's a very long plug coming out of the X controller, so you'll need your own extension cord. But in any case, it works. It looks pretty cool. I get to do more tomorrow. This collection system is done, and this is the end of the actual build. My next step will be a test. 
but ending the build turned out to include a number of astonishingly dumb design moves. To start with, the pole that holds this whole infrastructure here doesn't have a bottom, so I have it attached with duct tape, otherwise it just falls through. The other thing that was kind of astonishingly dumb is you have to disassemble all of these gantry components to get the slide in pieces to work. Why couldn't have we done that earlier? I don't know. But it's done. I'm hoping it's going to work. I'm going to get to test it tomorrow. So cross your fingers. Here we go. Testing time. Now that the build is done, I want to address an area of huge annoyance during the process of this. Missing parts. I had missing parts again in putting together the dust collection. There were a couple of missing screws. Now, I contacted Inventables after the holiday weekend and asked them for some spare screws. I asked them for four M5x12s and four T-nuts. And they sent me two packages, nice packages, of a whole bunch of different parts, which I'm really grateful for. They FedExed them, which was great. But why couldn't they have just included it in the kit? I can't imagine, with all the reports I see of other people missing parts, that including a couple of bags of spare parts it might add to five bucks to their cost. I can't imagine it's worth the frustration, anger, and just almost rage that comes from pieces missing. And I double-checked every one of my parts. I keep track of all the parts bags and check. Another day, and it's done! That's right, it's done, and it works, and I carved a square. Yes, I made sawdust with the X-carve. I'm excited, can you tell? It's been a hell of a project. I ha it's 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 been huge, but it works. It's done. Check it out. I mounted a board. I clamped it down. I'm using thank you Asus for providing me with the shop computer. I really appreciate it. And it's working. It actually carved wood. So in the future, stay tuned for more articles and more videos about the X carve. There's a lot to learn, and thanks for coming along for the ride. Okay, so there you go. It is done. It is currently sitting on two borrowed carts out of the Fab Lab. I'm going to eventually build a cart system for this thing. But it's done, and it's in place, and my next activities are going to be doing a lot of building using the x -carve. So thank you for watching all of my little snippets. Let me know what you think about that um, format in the comments below. And for ZDNet's DIY IT, my name is David Gewurz. Go out there and carve something awesome.